Today, uh, I am with uh, Jamie. Well, not all day anyway, but um, we're here installing an EV charge point for a couple of parking spaces over there, which is for the customer's property. So, got the meter box here. We have BG, weatherproof consumer unit. We've got Hypervolt, isn't it? Is it Hypervolt? Yeah. Nice, so we've got the Hypervolt. It's all um, out of the box. You've got it all CTS gland ready already. Do they come with CTS glands in now? They don't. They took the CTS out. Oh, they took them out. Okay, they took them out. Um, so we have to put them back in. So this charge is now almost ready out of the box. Just walk through the installation as we do it step by step. So Jamie, I presume that with the mark you've made on the wall there, yep. do you intend to? Drill a little hole through. Yeah. Bring my tails into the meter. And that allows me to connect the handle block in this meter cupboard. Okay. Ready to connect into the board. Nice. So we're just gonna, I'll see in this meter box, we can squeeze in a couple of, well, either, if, what have you got? Single pole handy blocks? Yeah. Okay, a couple of single pole handy blocks, earth bar, and then run the cable through so it's hidden straight into the BG weatherproof board. Okay, nice. Let's do that then. Just enough to fort Jamie for, I didn't think of it until then, but um, probably there may be a better idea to put something down there just to catch the dust. Yeah. Because it's, it's white, it stands it. out so much, doesn't it, on the, um, yeah. on the bark. So normally with brick dust, it kind of doesn't stand out as much and you can kind of rub your hand over it and brush it away. But um, cool, so we've got the hole through there then and quick little scoot around with the, the vacuum, clear that all out, and then what will you be what will you be doing next? I'll get my uh, tail through my hole, and then I'll seal up the hole, make sure no water gets through. Yeah. Um, let that dry while I clip the cable through, and then that'll be ready for later. Cool, spot on. Hole hoovering there, Jamie. I've <laughs> done it before. I've done it before. Covered the whole hole, whole, whole, whole with the hose. <laughs> Very nice. That last and final brown uh, tail is going to be a test of your ability, isn't it? Yeah. To get that in. <laughs> oh, he's done it, look. First time. No retakes at all. Nice one. Nice. So what you put you putting that in there now just so that that gives it a bit of time to set and Yeah, before cool. I and I can clip the cable in the meantime. Nice. Oh what for the EV to the to the EV charger. The charger yeah. So so you're putting this in and next step is to <clears> put <throat> the SWA the cable, cable in. Probably get the bracket mounted and then start clipping it. Brilliant. You're just getting in the armoured cable and the external grade Cat5? Yep. I'm going to try and fish it behind this gas meter. Nice. Saves a couple of round. I'll grab this end for you. I'll try and be helpful. <laughs> How much do you want to come up the wall? That should be plenty. Yep, cool. This isn't a particularly long run, this one, is it? No. <laughs> It'd be nice if we had uh, EV charges like this every day, but um, nice some of the ones well. we do are uh, quite a distance and awkward. Uh, what are you after? Your 5.5 five bit? Yeah. So once you find that, then I'll take it you're going to be wanting to put a charger on the wall, it, connect yeah. landing it in, and then clipping back to the meter box, back to the consumer unit. So you've marked up the wall with the bracket that comes with the hypervolt charger. Yeah. So now you're going to drill that. So, fix these then. How much you how much you need inside normally? Not a great deal, it's just enough to kind of do a loop around to leave a little bit length so that Is that where you're terminating off there? Is that not a bit too much? Do you think? Well it's gonna come in, 
I've not, I've, to be fair, I've not even terminated one of these before, so I'm... <laughs> <laughs> nah, I like to leave a little bit of slack so it's a bit of room for it. Cool. Is that the CK? Is that the CK one? Yeah. Oh, is it not? Is it just push on? Yeah. It's not a twist on? I think, I can't remember what other brand I see at the weekend. It's one of the, it's like Weha or one of those ones. It looks like a really, really good one. I think I've got the CK one as well, which has not been used much in the last few years. <laughs> <laughs> you ever use one of those Nipex stripping tools for like flexes? Yeah, what the ergo happens. is it ergo one the no, the like use one of the red one with the oh it's nipex sorry the, the black one but it's like that long it has a little like triangle a bit on the end a little blade uh, you is put it? it on you spin it round and it cuts it and then you just twist it and pull oh I... My, it's in there somewhere oh is it so got the, the armor stripped off the strands yeah uh cut away just the middle cord to take off this so the the outer so sheave and around the inner cores. Yeah. Cool. What's this armoured like? This is this is the nice, nice stuff. Actually, yeah. yeah. We had some recently that was horrendous. Yeah. Did you use it? Um, no, but I I got, I got I got I got the complaints from Adam. And what brand is this? Does it sell near? Yeah, this stuff's really good. That technique and it looked a little bit dangerous there, but you just, you kind of wasn't really moving the knife, was you? You're pulling yeah. the cable through it. That's it. Fair play. So I used to using the other thing. You might want to cut this bit off. <laughs> I'm used to using the other thing, but this doesn't feel natural anymore. Does that mean? I um I slipped my hand cutting an armor down my my hand before yeah. when I was like eight, 17 or eighteen. Yeah. And it slipped and it kind of went across my middle finger and then onto the palm of my hand. But I knew I hit my palm of my hand. There's still you can see just about a scar there. Yeah. Um on my hand. I knew I'd done that because that was like gaping open. Yeah. And then I was holding it with tissue and I like had my arm up above my head and then but my elbow was like dripping with with blood and yeah, I was like where's that coming so from sorry, sorry. and I realized my finger I nipped like a few mil of skin off the top of my finger and it was just weeping and weeping you see it like almost pulsing out yeah and I never never cut myself again I don't think from with a stanny blade that's what you do marking the wall for just a couple of fixings first, first cleat and then I was the first one on at the start first cleat and then the cool. When you get the app and yeah. you get it, you can see it's all working. You're then paying for the electric through the Octopus system. What car have you got? It's going to be a Kia. Okay. Kia aren't on their intelligent thing, aren't they? So intelligent thing's quite good. Um, you might be able to get one of the other ones that, that get a cheaper rate, but it might be slightly longer, higher. Yeah, probably like four hours time. on Octopus is not that. Not a lot. Not, yeah, if you're doing a lot of driving, then you're better off quite going for something around 15 pence, but you can get six, seven hours on it. Yeah, well, you can get like most of them around nine, nine to ten, but you get longer on British Gas, you get longer on. Well, that's the thing, Eon give you seven hours. So I'm just coming them back and might get back. But to speak to somebody else, you might get a different answer. That's what I mean. Well, yeah. nine o'clock. If you charge at seven kilowatts, you roughly add about 28 miles, roughly. Yeah. So 28 miles. So you're looking at five, six, seven hours at most. Yeah, but that's, that's why I need that longer charge. Yeah. You've got the, um, you're bringing in the power cable, the SWA. You've got the external grey Cat5, which you've taken straight through the box. Is that right? Yeah, yeah we'll go straight into, get into the meter box. Nice, it's passing straight through the underside, straight through the holes where the tails went through, and then, oh cool, yeah, that's, that's in here. Nice one. So eventually the CT tank will be connected to that, and that'll be connected into the charger for the load management. So what, well you're just doing the final connections then into the... Yeah, just got to get the armoured made off into the consumer unit. Um, now I can start making off all the final connections. Ready to go. Nice. Nice, warm cup of coffee. Especially when my hand's cold, this is nice. Yeah. It's actually quite mild actually at the moment, isn't it? But um, yeah. I think we're in for another cold snap again by the looks of it next week. The hottest day. Oh is it? The last hot day. Week, yeah. The last hot day of January. Hot, hot 13 degree day. <laughs> I 
would do if you if you're struggling to find like a full time placement, um, I know what I've said to other other kind of adult trainees in the past is maybe just offer a day or two here and there. Because does your college require you to have a full time job, or you just need to have somewhere to get the, the, your stuff to get the portfolio? Right, quick update then, Jamie. Where are we now? We've got the We've got the SWA made off into the board. Yep. Um, just put some ferrule ends on each conductor, ready to go into the terminals. Yep. And then I can start focusing on the charger end, and then come back, get the tails into the handy blocks, and then start doing some testing. So yeah, right. So then turn it on, and then get the tester out. Yeah. So give us a quick update now, Jamie. Um, what are you making off there? I'm making off the cables for the load management. So that's our Cat5 cable that runs back to the meter. Yeah. Um, which will have a CT clamp within the meter cupboard. And then just put these in a little plug and they go in this little terminal here. Oh, cool. Yeah, what, so you get the little plug that comes with the charger, yeah. and you just pick the cores that you want to use. That's it. Yeah. Go into the plug. Okay. What do you just use? All of them, like split equally. I like, split it 50-50. What do you just pick the same colors just, each time? I, I just, do you have a I habit of pick the same ones? My yeah. personal personal thing is I think of a live on a board as brown, and so I go with that one with positive, and then the blue in a in a board is neutral, so I go with that negative, and then green's close to blue. Okay. Orange is close to brown, so that's my personal preference, but everyone does it different. Yeah, it makes sense. So, you've got the plug, and you're about to connect that on, yeah? Yeah, so I'm just going to go brown, orange, and black. Which one does it go in there? Because I can see two. I was put on the left one. Okay. I think it, the second one is to allow for a second charger, so it loops out, I believe. Okay. Oh, so, okay, I don't, I don't know enough about that to mention anything, but... Um, so you always put it in the first, first terminal? Yeah, I always put it in the left one. Just wrap it around and then plug it straight in. Just like that. Nice. So now it's time for the mains cables then. Correct. So that's here a little bit of slack just in case anything needs to happen in the future. So do a little loop inside. Okay. Loop it up. Straight in the terminal. So what's next after this then? We will go over to the meter cupboard once I've got a photo of the inside. Yeah. So what's next? You've got the connections of the mains, uh, the SWA into the charger. Yeah. So you're taking your photo of the inside Mine. so you can upload that onto Tradeify. Yeah. Nice. And is that just for the showing the correct settings? Yeah. Okay. And then next step is to make a connection in the meter box. I'm going to get my one on too quick now. Oh, cool. So get a test. Right. So you get a test result with the charger now and then you can close the lid up and then move on to the meter box. So you've Putting on the, is that the internal cover? Like yep. the internal? Yeah, so this gives it a waterproof. It gives it a waterproof seal. Okay. Yeah, because this is obviously part of the new Hypervolt Pro, isn't it? Yeah, Hypervolt 3. Hypervolt 3. Before they didn't have that, is that right? So the cover, yeah. which I presume is reasonably similar to what it is now, you should just slide straight over the front, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and that acted as the waterproofing. Okay. Because this one's got a waterproof seal that goes within this unit. Okay. So when you tighten these back, it makes it completely watertight. So, got the cover to go on now. Oh yeah, that is that is completely different, isn't it? Yeah. You find it you find it side. easier, do you? I prefer these ones, yeah. Nice. That makes a nice change because normally when a uh, manufacturer changes something, it makes it worse. <laughs> they often make it worse. So uh, that makes a pleasant change. The snail. Snails work to play on the lid. Already? Yeah. Quite fast for a snail. We've done the animal rights now, so it's not the snail. <laughs> I think he had a soft landing. There's, a, there's, enough, <laughs> there's enough vegetation down there to not come to any harm. This is the 10 meter, isn't it, Hypervolt? So that's um, quite a reasonable amount of cable that needs to be yeah. wrapped around there, but in this cold weather, it's Probably a little bit more difficult to work with. Yeah, doing a nice neat job of wrapping that round, Jamie. Thank you very much. So 
so you give them the cables a nice clean off and so next bit what's what's the next bit next bit that you're going to do connecting the handle blocks yeah so we'll just let the customer know that we're going to turn the power off okay shortly and then once i've got my tails in i'll tell them it's going to go off and then we'll start putting it all together cool ready to turn the power back on. just in case we can hear that because of the somebody <laughs> mowing uh, uh, maybe mowing or something um so you're just going to put the handy blocks into the into the meter box yeah earth bar ready oh, get our ends in connect the, the, the tails in from the the consumer yeah. it connected in ready and then need to let the customer know to turn yeah. the power off and then we'll swap over the okay. side of it and then that'll give us power and we'll start testing the and the final bit is just the last test results yeah tidy up and then away we go to the next one next cool So finishing update then, Jamie. We got the all the connections are made, nice and neat in there, like that. CT clamp on there for the load management, which is that device there. Weatherproof consumer unit, and the charger, all on and energised. You just got a bit of tidying up left to do. And what do you do with the customer next? So I'm going to go on my app and then onto the installer app. Onto the installer app, and yeah. then it will allow me to put the network settings in and yep. then I can put the customer's details in and then that allows him to then access the app which I'll then explain to him how it all works. Cool. So we'll schedule, lock it, X, Y and Z. Excellent, nice, simple as that. I haven't actually done that journey myself but um, that's quite handy to know that. Um, excellent, so that's the installation of a Hypervolt um, Home Pro 3. Here's the installation guide, which we didn't use. You don't need to use that, did you? We've done a few no. of these now. Um, so yeah, that's, that's basically the installation of a Hypervolt EV charger.